My guest today is Becky Gaudet. Becky, how are you? Hey, I'm doing really well. Well, aside from the minor cold, but other than oh, that. You're not, you're not feeling up to your, you're not feeling 100%, I'm sorry. Um, what do you do um, in, in Seattle? You're in Seattle, right? Yeah, yeah. So, well, Renton, close enough. Where are you? South of Seattle. I'm in Renton. I'm 15 minutes away from the airfo- airport and about 20 minutes away from Redmond, where campus is. Ah. Yeah, so kind of Seattle-ish area, but south right. of Seattle, basically, which is uh, which is kind of nice. Um, and yeah, what do I do? That's an interesting question. So it's a little a little different than what I've done before. I'm not as technical as I used to be. So I work for the commercial marketplace operations team. It's more enablement team is what we're calling it now, not operations. It started out as an operations job, but we still do ops. It's just more we're helping publishers um, to enable them through the experience with um, the commercial marketplace. And what that really means is it's just a fancy word for everything related to Azure offer types in marketplace and Office 365 and Dynamics, basically, plus a couple offers kind of sprinkled in. Um, I don't cover those offers and I don't know them as well, but there's one called Consulting Services, one called Managed Services. Um, and then we also kind of have this SaaS applications offer, but it's more of a subscription service and not quite exactly SaaS like what you would think um, in Azure. Um, and I don't cover that as much. I actually focus more on uh, the IaaS offers. So um, I'm about to take on the IoT Edge offer. I work with virtual machines, which is the core of what started everything, I feel, in um, you know Azure and Azure apps, which is kind of like solution templates, which are like a subset of ARM templates. It's kind of a weird, weird like offer. It's not quite everything you can do with offer with ARM templates. And then I work with containers. We're uh, kind of working on a truer container um, offer, but right now we have container images that any publisher can create in um, an ACR, um, Azure Container Registry, and you can basically uh, publish to our marketplace, but the way it works is kind of interesting. You start at Partner Center. And I don't know if you've ever heard of Partner Center before. No, in fact, I'd be, I see you've said the word offer a, a few times here. Yeah. What do you mean by that in this context? So it's specifically like, kind of like um, you know how Windows has their Windows applications, and they're specific to Windows uh, like, Store. Like, how do like you get the, something in Windows Store? Like, yeah, Word, Excel, but like you know, downloading it from the Windows store. So something, oh, right. you have to get through a process. The part, the partner it could be, actually- It could be a game that somebody wrote. Yeah, it could be an Xbox game. So we're different than those specific offer types. We're only specific to Azure, Office 365, and Dynamics, just to kind of create a delineation between Windows, Xbox, and us. And Visual Studio also has its own thing, which is, I don't know how you get a Visual Studio offer, and I'm trying to figure that out in the next week or so. Um, so, so an offer is just something that's sold yeah. through a store. Exactly. That, uh, deployed to our cloud. To yeah. Azure. Yeah. And our entry point is basically partner center. So anything that comes to us and you see in the Azure marketplace or app source is ours and is related to commercial marketplace. And you always start in partner center. And I deal with the process from the beginning of partner center to where they upload everything to the end of the certification process and how it gets to marketplace. And I work with a million different teams in between. So I am all about the process side. If something is broken on the process side, I will help fix it with these teams and I will wrangle them. I will also sometimes talk to publishers and ask them, hey, what do you think is your best part of your experience? What is the worst part of your experience? What could we improve upon basically? And Um, I ask them for feedback and occasionally I get on calls where we have escalations. So my job is a little weird because I have a bit of the proactive side where I'm looking at strategy and I'm trying to help with the, my three offers. So if publishers are constantly telling us we have an issue with virtual machines with certification specifically, um, then 
I'll be like, hey, what's broken with certification? What do you need help with? And then I own some of the certification. Um, I own metadata certification. And the metadata specifically is everything you see that is entered into a part into the Azure marketplace. So if you see a title, we check the title. We check all the descriptions. We check really everything cool. to make sure there's no offensive adult content in there, um, okay. no explicit language. There's there's hundreds of policies. I don't know every single policy, but I know a lot of them. Like if someone puts a malware link into the metadata, like you link a support URL that's malware, mm -hmm. well, no, we're not going to approve you in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of interesting. So we do two validations. We do that validation, which is metadata and content validation. When you get certified, we also do technical validation. My team doesn't do the technical validation, but I work with that team. And like I said, I wrangle all these people. So they have 100 or 50 or 20 of these different checks. Some of it could be malware checks. So a lot of the times malware is specifically and automated in the process and it'll it'll deny the the offer if they have malware because we don't want malware in our marketplace. And the reason being is because um, stuff like solar winds, if you heard of that, um, solar winds attacked Azure specifically and the core to Azure. And that could cause a lot of issues when it attacks the core. Um, and so then hundreds of customers or thousands of customers or millions of customers are all of a sudden exploited and they're being attacked too. So that was a massive active attack. And if we have an offer in Marketplace that thousands of people or hundreds or millions of people are downloading, it's attacking our own core technologies. So we had hundreds of thousands of people at Microsoft, maybe not that many, but thousands of people at Microsoft where we were looking at every aspect and you have to look at the publisher side, you have to look at the customer side, you have to look at every side, anything SolarWinds could have sold to someone, you have to look at, so it's kind of interesting. So we have security aspects. My job is all over the place. Like it's it's intense and it's great, but I could all of a sudden get it called in right now. I could get a text message that says, hey, we've got a big security incident. Can you please check this offer? And then we have to go message the publisher and say, hey, you know, we suspect you're under active attack. Here are your possible offers. Here's your offer ID, blah, blah, blah. That's one of my things. The other thing could be, I'm having trouble with certification and I'm a very, very important publisher. I just contacted Scott Guthrie because I can't get through. It's taken me 20 times to publish in this partner center to get through the whole certification workflow from the start of the upload to entering the metadata to the back end where we're checking it to make sure it's safe and secure and all the hundreds of checks. Then and the denial letter, they they could have gotten 20 denial letters. Then Scott yeah. calls Becky and says, Becky, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> or I get an email. What happens is they don't call Becky. They call Charlotte Yarconi a lot of the times. <laughs> Charlotte Yarconi then goes to Paul Mayer, who's my GM. My GM then goes to my boss, Mark Malumbi. So it goes down the chain. <laughs> it gets trickled down to Becky. It gets <laughs> trickled down to Becky. And then someone says, Becky, Scott Guthrie, he needs this fixed. Please go in. Please talk to the different teams. And then... I'll have to go and talk to my technical team and my certification team for metadata validation for the content validation side and say, hey guys, can you go approve this because uh, here's the problem? Or can you tell me why this is this is an issue? Is this, can we do an exception maybe potentially? Right. Sometimes we'll do exceptions, but a lot of the times we have to handhold the publisher and say, oh, you actually, here's the documentation, here's how you fix it and kind of guide them. Do these things and then we'll, uh, mm -hmm. the, the certification sounds like it's a, it's a vetting process because Microsoft, mm -hmm. if we're putting something, making something available through Azure, you know, we're basically putting our stamp of approval on saying yeah. we've done some due diligence. Yep, and, and then the, the more same. due diligence you do, the longer it mm -hmm. takes, which is yep. potentially frustrating for the people this, that are creating this. Company. I know, I know. And the thing is that we get compared to Amazon and Google and I don't want to, I don't know their experience necessarily, but I hear Amazon's doing this, Google's doing this, but we have to make sure that we have a balance of, we have the right technologies and then we're doing the right things, but we also have quality. And so we have some instances and I'm not going to talk about them right now about quality problems that we handle after the fact, like, you know, this happened or that happened this way that should have happened a different way. And so we should have fixed it. 
And so now we're trying to get to the point where like you get, you're kind of in the middle, you have a really quality environment, but you're also helping the publishers and the fine balance between that's hard because you have to make sure that you're secure. You have to make sure that your content is just completely amazing and sounds great and has value propositions in our marketplace because not to pick on the Windows Store back in the day, the Windows 8 applications, there was, was a lot of people. Perfect. Yeah, they were just dumping Ten stuff in. Startups. <laughs> well, and that doesn't happen anymore. Now it's different. They also have policies. But there's a reason why we have hundreds of policies for, and a lot of them for each offer type. Because for the record, I was talking about Windows 8 when the store first opened. That there. is exactly what I was talking about. Of, That's of, uh, why they fixed it. They're very different. The Windows <laughs> 10 store is much more quality. They learn from their mistakes. That's the best <laughs> I can say. But we are constantly learning from our mistakes with that whole growth mindset. So. Right. We're the epitome of growth mindset because we're constantly thinking of ways that we can improve and we're okay if you make a mistake and if something is a mistake, then what are you going to do from it? You learn from it. You look at it and you say, oh, this happened. And then you go and you change and you start doing something else or you do it differently. I just um, did a show on growth mindset with uh, Sasha <laughs> Rosenbaum. That's uh, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure, but. That sounds about right with everyone at Microsoft, but we're the epitome of it because we're working so quickly and everything's changing constantly in Azure Marketplace that we have to adapt to it. Like, um, there's new security incidents every day. It's getting worse sure. from what I understand. Is and yeah, yeah. So I had to be there for Solar Winds. I had to be there on the weekend for Solar Winds. So um, we're trying to figure out wh what do we do in the future? So that me, as an ops person, I'm not a security expert, is not there for those solar winds incidents. How do we how do we make sure that we can mitigate this and we know that we don't have anything related to solar winds or solar winds level escalations where everyone can figure out what's going on without me being the bottleneck and having to wake up 800 people in India or 10 people in India or whatever. I had to I had to basically wake up so many people. It was it was an interesting incident. It was kind of cool to see it but kind of awful at the same time um, because I learned a lot about how we get certain things, but I don't, I don't have access. And here's the interesting part to certain things uh, um, on our infrastructure. And you have to contact like the, this person to talk to this person to talk to that person sometimes. And that's not great, especially if we have an incident like this, where we have to figure out is Azure being affected? How many customers are downloading this offer? Mm -hmm. um, is this offer affected? Luckily, our our offer was not affected. The publisher had fixed it um, over the summer, which was great. So we were lucky in that one. But what happens if someone like Red Hat is attacked? How do we mitigate that? How do we mitigate that with all the different customers who downloaded it? Um, the other thing, too, is that every virtual machine has multiple SKUs. And they, right now, I think we cannot parallel um, publish, but that's coming in the future. And so every time, so basically, every image a publisher has, so every offer, they could have like five or 20 images or something. They could have BYOL images, bring your own license. They could have images with the software in it. So depending on who they are, they could have multiple different items attached. Well, here's the problem. If there's one image, that's fine. That's easy. It just goes through. If they have 20 to 100 images attached to one offer, and you can create many plans mm -hmm. in an offer where you have different licensing models and different ways to sell a virtual machine, then basically what happens is they have to keep publishing them. And we mm -hmm. have to be really quick about it. Luckily, now VMs are automated. So it goes through within a couple hours. But before, when we were manually processing these six months ago, we had to get the certification team to approve as quickly as possible. And every time an offer was approved, I had to go and say, hey, certification team, here's the other offers. Just watch this in your queue. Please make sure that you approve these each time so that as they're approved, and then um, let me know that I so I can let the publisher know so they can publish the next one. Intervention, wasn't there? Yeah, it was it was a lot, and um, we're trying to automate everything in the next year for certification, at least as much as we can, 
um, there will still be some stuff, like some exceptions where we still have to manually go through and approve some offers or look at offers. Like we're having um, a debate about blurry images because blurry images are very subjective. And so like you mean pictures. Yeah, Not pictures. So logos. So here's the thing. We we have a set um, resolution for okay. three different logo types. Got it. And so we noticed something so the other day. <laughs> yeah, medium to large, basically. So, but we don't have a set resolution or DPI. Hmm. And I think the DPI is what's the most important. So what happens is they upload one image and then it gets recreated three times over. And then what happens, you can imagine, all large. of a sudden it's blurry. Yeah. Yep. Even Depending on which one you... Large. Even going from a small, large to a small, sometimes it, yep. uh, it's blurry. Yeah, and we should be uh, we should be setting DPI, I believe. So like minor stuff like that, I'll get told, oh, hey guys, like this is causing a problem. Can we put in, um, you know, maybe a different uh, type of way for the publisher to upload these images? I think the way that they're uploading them is not the best way. So we have things like that where we get a minor minor question related to that. Um, and we have certain things that are per offer type and certain things that are for all offer types. So I had a call with a publisher a couple of weeks ago and they were telling me something and they said something entirely different than what I thought they were going to say. And it was interesting and it was something I was trying to get fixed and that should be coming out in the next uh, few weeks. So it was really interesting because I thought they were going to actually tell us that it was something on the amount of days that it takes for our certification for one of our offer types, but they actually, they talked about something entirely different. I didn't even think about, which was really helpful for me because now I could be like, Hey, can we, can we fix this other issue? So it's kind of cool when you're talking to a publisher and you're like, what's your experience? What's the issues that you're running into? Like, what do you like? What do you dislike? So I think I need to have more of these calls. Um, the hardest part, though, is that um, my inbox is automatically starting out with like 300 emails. And the reason why is because a support person at Microsoft finds out that I am attached to Marketplace somehow. And I'm attached to the virtual machines and containers and IoT Edge and, and such. And I just said that I was attached to that, too, on this. So now all of a sudden, I'm going to get like 300 well, more emails. I, from my tens of viewers, you're going to get all those. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, they'll they'll search it a month from now or they'll search <laughs> it a year from now. But yeah, they'll, they'll all of a sudden, I'm going to get all these emails because everyone knows I'm in Marketplace. And then my inbox is filled. And instead of sometimes submitting to support, what they'll do is they'll email me. And every time someone emails me, and I, most of the time at least, I'm really good about this. I have to say, guys, you got to go through the support link. Um, right. And by the way, if anyone's trying to get support, aka.ms forward slash marketplace um, community, I believe, or marketplace support. aka.ms slash, what was it? I think it's marketplace support, actually. That marketplace support is is it's redirecting to something. <laughs> uh, welcome to support for business. Good call. Yay! I said it wrong at first, so it's not marketplace community, marketplace support. That's great. Um, we have an internal one too, and um, I'm not going to mention it right now because it's internal. But if anyone needs escalations um, ever, I try to send that to internal people at Microsoft. So if anyone emails me at Microsoft from like the CSA community from OCP, which is I think now GPS or which sounds like global positioning systems <laughs> every time I hear it, but I know OCP it's global partners. Commercial partner at one time. Yeah. And no now it's global well. partner solutions or something like that. That sounds reasonable. Po possibly. Kind of like ours is Moeg, M-O-E-G, Marketplace Onboarding, Enablement, and Growth. But it sounds like Marketplace Ops, Enablement, and Growth. People say ops and accident all the time. This company loves those acronyms. <laughs> yeah, we love our acronyms. We we call ourselves lovingly Moeg now. We used to be CMO, <laughs> Commercial Marketplace Ops. So all the acronyms. But uh -huh. but yeah, it's, it's interesting. I get a lot of emails from people who knew me from OCP and DX back in the day. And they'll be like, hey can you fix this or can you help my publisher with this? And I'll say, Hey, here's the internal link. So yeah. if anyone is contacting me internally, ask me for the link before you email me, because I am not the person that usually answers the questions. 
I am very much at the PM level now, and I am not supposed to necessarily be stuck in the weeds as much. We're trying to get out of that, and I'm trying to be more on the strategy side. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to go through engineering and be like, hey, guys, can you do this for publishers? Or at least think of something I can do from the ops side. Like, right now, I'm interviewing a bunch of publishers just to see what the experience is like for Azure apps. By the way, if anyone wants to be on that list, email me. I'm trying to get more people. If you're watching this and you have to be building an Azure app and you're having trouble, you can email reissrm at microsoft.com. Um, if you are not attached to that type of offer and is a different offer, um, only talking to Azure apps people, there was one person I was interviewing, it was interesting about Azure apps and they had mentioned a consulting services offer. I don't cover consulting for services, but I could forward you over. Um, it's probably easier just to go through support for that one though. Um, it'll get to the right channels. The other thing too is that I go on vacation sometimes and if people email me to ask a question and I was on vacation last week, then I am the bottleneck all of a sudden. If you need to publish to Marketplace right now, that is not something that would be helpful if you just send me an email related right. to something that's an immediate time sensitive topic. It always helps. Email on vacation. Exactly. They should be going, you should always go through marketplace support and you should always go through either if you're Microsoft, the internal support, and you should go through what we call ask Moag. So internally go to ask Moag. I'm not going to give away the URL, but I'll just say it's ask Moag. It's very obvious how to get there. Um, but yeah, I'm at the bottleneck a lot of times, and seriously, well, tell, when I, tell me about the um, if if I have an application or I have a new virtual mm -hmm. machine that I've built, um, what is the best way to get started to get that pushed out to Azure? Yep. I, it's it's not emailing a human being, right? There's some sort of portal for that, correct? No, it's Partner Center. So I've talked about Partner Center, yeah. uh, oh, and yeah. it's similar. I, I don't know if you remember MPN back in the day. MPN. What does that stand Microsoft for? Microsoft Partner Network. So oh, okay, that yeah. still when exists. I was, uh, when I was a consultant, I, I worked for a consulting company. And they were a partner. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. There, so are that, le there were levels of partners. Mm -hmm. And that also helps you get through Partner Center because if you already have an MPN ID and you already have the partner ID, then you can start working with Partner Center. You just have to go through, I believe there's a vetting process. And I can't remember the URL for Partner Center. It might be partner.microsoft.com, but that might also be the MPN network. But if you either Google or Bing, either just Partner Center, then you should be able to find it. It's very easy. Yeah. And then... Oh, sorry, to but partner.microsoft.com did take me to uh, join the Microsoft Partner Network. Okay, so that is the partner network. So that's one of the one of the processes. So if you go through that process and you get your MPN ID, you're perfect. You've got your business set up. You tell it who you are. It should vet you, and it could, should go through what we call our one vet process, um, and make sure you're a business. You have to have a physical business location, if I remember correctly, um, somewhere to be able to sell on Partner Center, and. It gets a little hairy from what I understand if you know that there's, you know, China. If you're trying to sell through China, that's an entirely different marketplace. Mm -hmm. I only handle non-specific um, spe to special instances like that. And we have Azure government on Partner Center. So just regular government. That's not like necessarily DOD. But DOD government, I think they're going to have a certain way department of defense we're going to have something special for that um we're working on if i remember correctly some type of vetting through partner center to be able to get into the dod um, instances uh for your offers so it's kind of interesting so you go there you get vetted basically and you're at that point once you get vetted there you could actually try to publish to azure government and to every um region that you want to publish to that is not specifically controlled through a sovereignty like um, China. Germany might be one too. I can't remember who all of them are, but there are. But there are a few countries that yeah. take really restrictive control mm -hmm. over what goes through there or can be offered through Azure or through any cloud provider. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I'm not sure also if you can publish the Azure Stack Marketplace yet through Partner Center. Uh, we were working on that, but I don't know that that's a case too. They might have their own special instance that's sideloaded. The other thing that gets weird too is VM extensions. And we don't get a lot of those, but you have to email us to be able to publish a VM extension. You don't actually use Partner Center. It gets it gets really, really hairy with that one, uh, but we're working on it. We're trying to get that through Partner Center. But so, okay, you get your vetting, you got your MPN ID. Now you go to Partner Center and you log in and you should get a, a nice big drop down that basically are a list of items you can do. There's commercial marketplace. I think if you wanted to, if you had chosen, so, so uh, let me step back a little bit. There are different choices once you get into Partner Center, once you've been vetted for Xbox, for Windows, um, I don't know what else is in there and commercial marketplace. So for us, you want to choose commercial marketplace because you want to publish an app there. So you choose all the items you want. And then when you get to the next step, it'll show you all the different areas for publishing an application like Windows or Xbox. It's like choose your own adventure or commercial marketplace. Then you go to commercial marketplace and there's a section that says publish your offer basically. And if you hit publish, then we get like 16 offer types on there. Mm -hmm. And so then you can decide, do you have an Office 365 app? Do you have a SharePoint app? Do you have a Teams app? Do you have a VM, container images? There's like, like I said, so many, 16 right now. There could be 20 in the future. There could be less. We might consolidate some of the offers. Um, there's a lot of debates, but you choose your own adventure. So for me, I would have VM. So let's say you choose virtual machines. Okay. Then you get to a new screen and it says, enter your metadata. What's the title? What's the description? What, you know, in the description though, you want to put your business value. So I, I did a, a whole webinar on this on content validation and why it's important, but mm -hmm. you're marketing your application, put in what would sell your application, put in what you see on your actual website related to your application. What is the actual title? What does it do? Also, we get a little weird with like certain things. Don't say that it's whatever IIS, that's wrong. You wanna basically say Windows, whatever, or monkey application on Windows IIS or monkey application on Windows 8. You don't wanna say monkey application Windows 8 because we will fail that. And the reason why is because of Microsoft IP related issues. You have to make sure that you word stuff specifically the way that um, we want it for your marketing so it doesn't conflict with legal related. Oh, so it doesn't tips. sound like you're selling, like your product is a Microsoft product. You need yes, exactly, product. exactly, which I, I, I don't know all the legal stuff. Machines, they are a set of applications mm -hmm. pre-installed on a specific version of a given operating system. That's that's really yes. the market. So you wanted, if I wanted all these things mm -hmm. at lap stack, for example, <laughs> well, which is uh, just you know, make sure you put it Linux in right. And Angular and Mongo and all that stuff, all bundled together on a virtual machine, so you don't mm -hmm. have to bother installing. It's just yeah, stand up, ready to start developing. Yeah, and that that happens pretty often. So you just want to make sure and be clear that you're on the technology, that you're not actually the technology at Microsoft, which makes a lot of sense. Um, and we have this listed in our big policy website. If you Google commercial marketplace policies, you will find or the Bing. handy dandy or Bing or Bing. I like to say both or DuckDuckGo, whichever you feel like. <laughs> I, I have no preference on any of them. I'm okay with you using whatever search engine, but any search engine should come up with our policies. So it should list out what you can do with the Windows logos, what you can do with our technology logos that you have to be very specific to. We will fail you on a logo that takes the Windows logo and uses it in certain ways. Like you could put your technology in the Windows logo on um, an image, but I think that there's certain restrictions and requirements related to the same legal stuff that is related to representing us and you know using our technology. So. There's all these terms of uses. There's also something that's written into our, I think, agreement. When you go through, by the way, when you're publishing, you have to sign an agreement for a commercial marketplace that basically states uh, a bunch of different things that say that you're secure. We can remove you if you're not secure. 
we can remove you if you violate our policies. It, there's all this little legal terminology in the terms of service. So definitely read that. Right. I know That'll it's pretty lengthy. Yeah, it will. It will absolutely. And it talks about how you should publish your privacy policy. Um, we have stuff about contract tracing now too. You cannot do contract tracing in virtual machines. Um, basically what it means is you cannot get gather people's information from what I understand, um, customer data in your application without um, telling the person or the customer right. and mentioning um, that they have to accept it in the terms, basically. So you can't just take people's information. So, and I'm sure that breaks a lot of GDPR too, if you're starting to take people's information. So I'm guessing there's probably a lot of GDPR related stuff. And I know that if you're doing something with Office 365, you have to be very GDPR compliant. Um, HIPAA is the same way, I'm sure too, for anything hospital related. But uh, we, we have tons of different nuances and and pieces, but um, just getting back to the process. So you enter all that information. You've looked, let's assume you've looked at all those policies. You've uploaded, you put your images in, you put in your description, you put in your title, you upload your virtual machine, and then you hit the next button. And it actually submits it to certification and uh, pre authorization. There's a couple checks from what I understand before it even gets to my team. One is the malware check, I believe. Right, some automated checks. Yep, some automated checks. So it goes through those checks. You're good. Your company's good. Your payment information's good. You should be able to go through. Then it goes through and it goes through a certification piece. And it splits off and it veers. It goes to content and it goes to technical. And it goes through those workflows. And 95% of them are automated now too. So it should take a couple hours. And if you fail at that point, what happens is the two workflows converge and they have to say, hey, this is good or this is bad. And if one of them says that you've failed one of those policies, you're going to get an email and you've yeah. killed the process. It's kind of like a general workflow. But if you don't, it goes through, you get to do a preview. And in 24 hours, your offer is available in Marketplace. People can purchase it. Nice. Which is pretty cool. I know there's so many different nuances, though. I could talk about this for like five hours, probably. <laughs> well, we are just about at time. Is there anything that's uh, really important that we should cover that we haven't? I think this is the gist of it. Um, I'm sure there's like a million other things I could think of, but I'm going to just like <laughs> say, you know, go through the process if you're interested, read all the policies beforehand read all the technical or the terms of use, read everything before more knowledge is better to get you through this process, especially if you want to get through um, to Azure or to AppSource just to publish an offer. And it will be really, really helpful. Excellent. This is a space that I don't have much experience at all. In, and so I've learned a lot uh, talking to you, Becky. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, David, for having me. You stay safe. You too, man. Hey, everyone. I just wanted to say that David is really awesome. I met him at a technology conference, and he is one of my greatest friends. <laughs>